Hello, I'm Das Sauerkraut, creator of the Calendar Weather Module for Foundry VTT. Today I'm going to be going through and showing you all how to install and set up Calendar Weather, as well as showing off its features. Alright, let's get started. The first thing you'll want to do is to get it installed. This can be done through the Foundry Module Browser. Go to the Add-on Modules tab, then click Install Module. You'll want to, you'll want to search up here at the top for Calendar Weather. and click install. After that's installed, uh, you'll have to install About Time by T. Posny as well. Uh, About Time is a dependency for Calendar Weather and the module will not function without it. After that, you can optionally install FX Master by uh, Uman uh, for some enhanced weather features, but it is not required. I'm gonna go ahead and do that though, just so I can show it off. Now that that's all done, let's go into our world and get the calendar all set up. So go ahead and launch your world. Now that the world is all loaded up, you'll want to go into the Game Settings tab up here, click on Manage Modules, then uh, check About Time, Calendar Weather, and if you installed it, FX Master. Then click Save Module Settings. This will trigger a reload, and then Calendar Weather is installed. Let's get the calendar all set up for use in your game. So let's go through the settings page for About Time and Calendar Weather, and I'll explain these settings and what they'll do. So the first thing is in About Time, you've got the Game Update Multiplier. This is essentially how many seconds of real time is a second of game time. So if you set this to two, every one second in real life is two seconds game time. Then we have the real-time interval, which is just how often the game clock will update. Uh, personally, I like to have it at 1, because it will uh, the clock will update every second, and it's just kind of neat to see. Um, then we've got game seconds per round, which is per when, when you're in combat, the uh, tracker will pause, and every round it will add 6 seconds, or whatever amount you've got set here. The other stuff, this you can ignore as well as debug output. However, if you're wanting to just go ahead and load a calendar, there are several common calendars already available, like the Gregorian, which is our modern day calendar that we use in real life, uh, the Warhammer Fantasy calendar, as well as Greyhawk, Harptos, Glorian, Exandrian. I'm going to go ahead and load up the Warhammer calendar when we get to uh, the demo portion of that later. Um, but after that we've got the calendar weather settings, uh, the first of which is the display for non-GM users. Basically if you have this checked, the calendar will display for all your players. It's as simple as that. Uh, the, other, uh, the other two options there are simply just, do you want to display moon phase changes and weather to the chat? Only the GM will be able to see them though. Uh, then there is a display time as 24 hours. This is useful for some of those international folk, uh, but I'm going to leave it off for now. And then we've got disable global illumination at night. Uh, which is once, if you've got it checked and the scene reaches max darkness, it will disable the scene's global illumination. Now that that's all explained, let's move on to actually setting up the calendar. So, to set up the calendar, you first have to click this, which will pull open the calendar settings window. It's very fancy, I know. Um, and here you see quite a lot of options. Um, if you went ahead and selected a uh, default calendar, you'll just want to go down here and click load default calendar and when you click it, it'll pre-populate everything. Um, should note, uh, particularly with the Warhammer calendar, is intercalendary days like Hexenstag don't by default come as intercalendary, so you need to go through and give them a nice click here. But what if one of your but what if your calendar that you're wanting to use isn't in the thing? It isn't a default option. It's a homebrew or something like that. Well, luckily for you, there's quite a couple options. Um, so you can the the whole calendar system is completely arbitrary. 
So I can just click add a new month. Let's call it Bob, Bob month. Why not? Uh, set its length to say 22 days. Uh, make it the current month. And there you go, you have a new month. And you can do this for your whole calendar and it will cycle through things properly. You can also uh, have a uh, arbitrarily large amount of weekdays. So this is Bob day and it's gonna be the current weekday. You can also set the current day of the month up here, what the current year is, and the arrow, which is just a little display at the end. So let's say this is happening in like the year 2000 BC, there you go. You can also set the time here, um, and that's pretty much all you need to know about setting up the calendar. So once I click save, you'll see it's now the 7th of Bob month, uh, 2222 BC, and the weekday is Bob day. You'll also see, since the uh, clock is running, that since we set the interval time to uh, 1, Every second, the clock updates. Okay, so before we get into events and weather, I'm just going to go over some basic controls for the calendar. So first thing is, down here, you can click on the time display, and it will pause the time display. Now, when you do that, the this will unlock the uh, second ad advancer and the 30 second advancer. These things are disabled normally because they're kind of useless when the, time, when the clock is running by itself. Um, you can always advance the time by a minute, 5 minutes, 15 minutes, and an hour by clicking these buttons on the bottom row. If you're wanting to just go ahead and advance to midnight, you can click this little moon symbol. And if you're wanting to advance to 7 a.m., you click the sun symbol. Furthermore, you, if you right click and drag, you can move the calendar around to anywhere on the screen. Uh, Right-clicking on the uh, time display will cause it to reset to its default position. Okay, let's go through and set up some events. So to open up the events menu, you click this little uh, event button right next to the date. And so once you open it up, you get this nice little menu that has options for moons, seasons, reoccurring events, and one-time events. So let's just go down the list, and we're going to start by adding a moon. So you can give this this moon a name. Let's call it Moon. Um, oops. You can set the length. The length is essentially how many days it will take from take the moon to go from uh, uh, new to new again. So if I set this to say I don't know, let's say 22 days then it will take 22 days for the moon to make a whole cycle. You can go ahead and set the fullness in percent. So let's say we're gonna start it at 25% and if the moon is waxing. If the moon is not waxing, then it is waning. You can also set uh, lunar eclipse chances and solar eclipse chances here. I recommend not messing with those. They should be pretty rare as they are unless you're running in some kind of setting where lunar eclipse and solar eclipses are frequent and common. So that's a moon added. So let's go through and add some seasons. Um, seasons are fairly important uh, because seasons help with weather generation. If you don't have a season uh, defined, your weather generation is always going to be a little weird even if you're using climates. So here I went ahead and added four seasons and we're gonna go ahead and name this one. Let's call this one summer. Well, just some, why not? This one is fall, winter, and spring. And so you can set the date that it'll start. So let's have a, a summer start on the first day of the first month because I'm lazy and I don't wanna change it. Then you can change how the temperature is. So summer is normally hot, so the temperature is going to be, uh, uh, it's going to be a plus. And at least where I live, summers are fairly humid as well, so the humidity is also going to be a plus. You can change the time uh, of day that the sun rises, so dawn, since it's summer, it's dawn, it, it dawn starts pretty early, and when the sun sets, you can also change the color 
that the icon down here will be, depending on the season. So let's make it red. If you've got a roll table and you don't want to use pre-generated weather, you can just uh, drag that roll table into there and it will use the roll table instead of the weather algorithm. So let's go ahead and go ahead and just set everything else up. So fall is uh, pretty neutral in terms of temperature. It's a little drier though. And let's make it the second month, first day, why not? Change it to orange. I don't want to mess with that because I'm lazy. Winter is colder and drier than normal. And it's on the third month. And let's make it white. And spring is neutral and wetter than normal. So, and then we just gotta set that to the fourth month. And that's all our seasons done. After that, we've got reoccurring events. Reoccurring events are events that will happen on a certain day every year. So, sort of like holidays. So, if I say there is something called, like, I don't know, Bobmas, which is when the settings god was born or something like that. And basically every year on this day, uh, the, the, second, uh, the second month, the ninth day, uh, Bobmas will occur. And so what you can do is you can uh, either, if you, can, if you type in at at and then do journal entry, uh, like this, uh, if you drop, if you have a journal, journal entry name, uh, whenever Bob miss occurs, it will display all the text from the journal entry in there. If you don't want to do that, you can just remove the single at and it'll just display a link to the journal entry. But you can also just have a simple text string for this, so something like, hello. There is also support for macros if you want to fire off a macro. Uh, when Bob miss occurs, and I believe that's done with the at macro syntax. Uh, but for now, we're just going to leave this as bellow, because I mistyped and I don't want to change it. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about reoccurring events. So after reoccurring events, we have one-time events. One-time events are events that will happen once ever at usually a specific time of day. Um, so if we add a one-time event, you can see we have an, uh, a, a name field. So let's call this one Bob dies. And so Bob will die on the, the 16th of the fifth month this year at seven, four, at seven minutes or at 7 a.m. 43 seconds. You can also click an all-day event, at which point this will just happen whenever the day turns over. And as the same, and as similar to reoccurring events, you can do the at, at journal syntax, the normal journal syntax, uh, just the string, so on and so forth. It's it's this little bit here is exactly the same as reoccurring events. And then we just got to click save event settings, and you'll notice that we now have a little moon symbol down here for the moon we added. And it is currently summer, so the little weather icon is now red. Now that we've gone through events, let's go ahead and go through weather. So if you click on this little uh, button here, it'll open up the weather widget. And the weather widget, it displays a couple things. The temperature, the current climate, and what the weather is. So if I click on this, it will switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius. And clicking on the climate will uh, select pretty much a, a drop-down with all of the available climates. There are two special climates, uh, the volcanic and polar climate. The volcanic climate has a different weather generation. It's got different weather. So, for example, it's got dark, smoky skies today because you're next to a volcano, and so it's going to be pretty ominous all the time. Then there's the polar climate, which has, ne which has normal... Uh, weather generation. It's just that, well, it's very cold there too. But if your season it has a plus for temperature, um, the days will be extremely long. There will only be an hour of darkness uh, each day. And if your season has a minus temperature, your days will be extremely short and there will only be an hour of light uh, each day. And that's pretty much all of the climates there. 
there is more to do with weather aside from just doing this. Um, weather will be generated every day. So, as you can see, each time I click the new day button, um, it will regenerate that. Um, also, if you go into your scene configuration and select scene weather effects, and you now I must mention you have to have the FX Master module installed, uh, or this won't do anything. The scene weather effect setting will not do anything for you unless you have it installed. And when I click Save Changes and then kind of iterate through this, trying to get some weather that's you'll see that there is now some weather effects that just kind of happened because, you know, it's raining. Furthermore, there is a day and night cycle and you can enable the scene's day and night cycle by going into the scene configuration again, scrolling down and clicking the scene night cycle toggle on. Now you don't have to have FX Master installed for this. This is something that you don't need it for. Once you click save changes, um, the scene's night cycle will now happen. I suggest uh, refreshing the page after you do this, otherwise there'll be some kind of weird interactions with, uh, with the whole night cycle thing. So, so now that the night cycle is enabled, if I just go ahead and advance time to about 7 p.m., it will start to get dark, like so. And it will get fully dark an hour after at 8. So, see, now the scene is completely dark. This is the Foundry's uh, default lighting system. So if you throw a light down, it'll do that all properly. Then it will also, of course, if I go ahead and advance to... Oh, it's snowing today. If I advance to uh, about 6 a.m., you'll see that it will start to get light again as dawn happens. There you go, it is now day once more. I almost forgot. Um, you can toggle the calendar's visibility by going into the notes tab on the sidebar here and just clicking this little symbol and it'll go away. Well, that pretty much covers it. Um, that is all of the features that Calendar Weather currently possesses as of version 2.7.3, I believe. Um, there will probably be more in the future, but this is what it is currently. Uh, thank you for your time. Have a good one.